Can hidden hearing loss cause your tinnitus? That's the question for today. And today's answer comes from the Departments of Neuroscience and Surgery, University of Connecticut Health Center. The researchers, Dr. Bernstein and Trihadis, I'm not sure how to say his name. Um, so Dr. Bernstein and Trihadis have really uh, contributed heavily to this field. Um, and it's been over 20 years that they've been providing research. Now this is the deal. We pretty well know a big part of the mechanism of how people um, with significant hearing loss get tinnitus. But what about people with slight hearing loss or what might be considered even normal hearing? Well, foremost, consider the possibility of trigger points causing the tinnitus. Um, but what if addressing that well still does not help the problem? Well, that's where hidden hearing loss comes in, and we'll discuss that today. So where hearing hidden loss comes into play, perhaps the mechanism is actually the same as with those who have significant hearing loss. Now I'll briefly describe the research findings, and then I'll tell you what you can do and what you can use and what we can use for future improvements. The hidden hearing loss is usually found by good hearing tests, but it's labeled as slight or normal. Now recently, people with slight or normal hearing loss uh, were tested in a fancy way called binaural detection. Binaural means two ears. When a sound comes from a direction off to one side, um, even if it's very little, the sounds arrive at very uh, or slightly different times, very slightly, um, to the different ears. And so we use that difference to determine where the sound's coming from. Now what most of us don't consider is that we don't notice them as two separate sounds, like an echo, echo, echo. Our brain stem delays the forwarding of one slightly to sync it up with the other. These researchers use that delay property to reveal hearing loss that's considered hidden um, when you test only one ear at a time, and that's the way they will often do it. So the theory is that uh, losing a little hearing from each ear results in a multiplied hearing loss of internal hearing. And that was a significant part of this research, demonstrating that the extra hearing loss is real and measurable when tested in a special way. So this is how it looks graphically. Um, so this first one is, this is true normal hearing. 100% from each side and 100% after the brainstem delay processing. So you have, it comes in, if it's off to one side, it comes in a little, um, comes, it's more quickly to the side that, that the sound is being heard from and slightly delayed on the other side. Now, as expected, nothing is lost after recombining the delayed sounds in the brainstem and then continuing on up to your uh, upper brain where you perceive the hearing. Then we have those determined to have slight hearing loss. Now that may be even called normal. In this research, they use the example of a 20% loss from each side that would not be labeled as significant. It would only take a small decibel increase for them to hear normally. But after processing in the uh, brainstem, we find that a significant amount of hearing data is actually lost. That's very interesting. If you were to have guessed, you might have thought that it would be the opposite, that one side would compensate for the other. And it certainly does, but definitely not as a 100% replacement. So what can we use now from this study? Well, you can use the hope that it provides and hold on to your hearing test details. We might be able to use them to refine and personalize an approach to your tinnitus for more improvement. The hidden hearing deficit of binaural testing can be used to find those with hidden hearing loss, but it can also be used to have binaural auditory sounds for auditory discrimination therapy. So what about future applications? Well, what if? What if we could define the character of your hearing and tinnitus accurately and usefully enough to know what tinnitus therapy would be the most effective for you? How about this? We could refine the brain mapped, the brain maladapt, easy for me to say, the brain maladaptation profile for tinnitus by adding a binaural hearing test and do research to see if it improves the predictive ability of the tool. Now, what if we could combine binaural sound therapy into notch music, 
or into auditory discrimination therapy sounds and get even better results by presenting the brain with more realistic sound. And what if binaural auditory discrimination training in the specific frequencies is the answer to the tinnitus improvement for those sound and music field professionals who already have excellent auditory discrimination ability? I'd like to know your thoughts. Please leave a comment or request a review of a particular research study. To stay connected to tinnitus research and therapy applications, subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, make sure you, to be notified, click the, um, the bell and subscribe to our email newsletter at tinnitusenergy.com. Thank you and may God bless you. Oh yes, and one more thing. I wanted to share with you some uh, a website. It's called binauralnoise.net. Actually, it's called mynoise.net. It's got binaural sounds that are generated on it. Um, they're pretty cool. Some really neat sounds. So you can check that out too. Thanks. Have a great day.